Hi, this is Ed, just checking my audio. I'm gonna mute in a second.
Howdy. How are you doing, Ed? Doing pretty good. Thanks for asking. Yeah. Um, the, oh, good. Uh, I'm in a slightly noisy place, so I will mostly stay muted unless I'm talking. I'm on the okay. University of Michigan North Campus in the student center here, uh, soaking up the student atmosphere. Oh, nice. Hopefully that gets creative juices going. Yeah, I'm planning to sit in on an advanced networking seminar in a couple hours. So I've been reading networking papers and seeing what uh, research looks like these days. Cool. I figure if I ever make uh, eight figures worth of money, I'll quit and get a PhD. Okay. <laughs> there you go. At that point, you just pick whatever topic. You'll get a PhD in it. Because it looks interesting. Exactly. Right. Well, it's time, so I'm going to mute, but uh, talk to you soon. No worries. Um, we'll give it uh, about five minutes here, and then we can get started. Hi, this is Lucina. Howdy. In the chat, in the Zoom chat, I'll share the notes for today's meeting. Thanks, thanks in advance for adding your name and contact information. And please do if you haven't yet. Also, if you have any announcements or items that you'd like to address in today's meeting, please feel free to add it. For today's agenda. Hey, Lucina, this is Jared from the Rook Project. Uh, a quick question is, is there any, um, you know, particular format that you would like uh, agenda items added or could they just be added, you know, at the bottom or is there like a community discussion section to add things to? Sure. Hi, Jared. Nice to see you. Um, yeah, we've got, you're welcome to add, let's see. I'd like to go over um, the next iteration for the CNCF features and roadmap, and also I'll share my screen to kind of show you what, what I'm looking at here. And we also have a, a couple of slides added from the Alibaba Cloud folks, and you're welcome to add yours right below that. Cool. Thank you, Lucina. I appreciate it. You're welcome. And do you have any time limits? Are you able to hang out with us for the hour? Uh, I actually uh, need to take off at 1145 to get to a noon uh, engagement. It's, it's, uh, is the meeting pretty full today? I think that we should be good at that point. Let's see. We should be good. We'll time box the Q&A <laughs> after the, looking at the next iteration of CNCS to make sure that we'll have your, um, how long would you like to spend for the discussion? Oh, I think it's only um, just a couple of minutes because there had been some previous discussion on a um, an issue in GitHub and the cross cloud CI repo, uh, or the cross cloud repo, and um, I just wanted to bring it back up because it kind of had stopped at a will to pick it up on January 22nd. So I just wanted to get that started again, and we could take it offline after that probably. Okay, that sounds good. We'll get started in just a couple of minutes.
looks like we have a beyond top secret person joining. Yeah, ask who this is. Great, 105, we can get started. Thanks for joining the CNCF CI Working Group. Today is January 22nd. Just a quick note, this meeting is being recorded and will be shared to the Cloud Native Computing Foundation YouTube channel right after this call. The CNCF CI Working Group meetings are monthly on the fourth Tuesdays of the month at this time, 11 a.m. Pacific time. And there's still time if you'd like to add anything to the agenda. The link is here and also shared in the Zoom chat. Um, if you would like us to share it again, please post in the chat and we'll do so. Thank you. Great. So this is our first meeting in a few months due to a couple of events that um, the group has been attending. The recap, we've attended the KubeCon China in Shanghai, and there's a link here to the presentation that was presented if you would like to take a look at the slides. The NCFCI intro presentation was given by Watson. We also have Discovering the Untold User Stories of Kubernetes with Applied Anthropology. This was delivered by Hippie Hacker. You're welcome to click through and see that talk. We also attended KubeCon Seattle and the co-located event FDIO Mini Summit where um, a talk on the CNS was given. And at KubeCon Seattle, an intro to the Cross Club CI, and we've got a YouTube link here for the presentation, an intro and a deep dive, YouTube links for both. And um, Andrew from VMware gave a presentation on adding support for new platforms, and you're welcome to click through to see the presentation there. Some upcoming events that we are looking forward to um, include the Mobile World Congress for Barcelona, this is uh, the CNF project. We're preparing a presentation and README for that. Oh, great. Um, someone added the Linaro Connect. Would you like to tell us a little bit about that event? Yes, that's, uh, this is Ed from Packet. I have a proposal in for a talk about uh, CI systems and scheduling in CI systems where I hope to draw from a number of CI environments, including CrossCloud. Thank you, Ed, that sounds really interesting. Let us know if there's anything we can do to help with that. Um, in April, we'll be attending the Open Networking Summit in San Jose, California. We've submitted a few CFPs and are crossing our fingers and toes and hoping to hear back. Um, one of the topics for cross cloud projects will be regarding cross group collaboration 
and um, how and why we added the Linux Foundation project called ONAP to the CNCF CI dashboard. And we'll, we'll talk a bit more about that idea in general when we take a look at the next iteration of CNCF CI planning. In May is the next KubeCon Cloud Native Con in Europe, in Barcelona. The CFP window for that event too has closed, uh, but please click through if you are interested in attending that whole event thrown by uh, Cube, Kubernetes and the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Are there any other past events or upcoming events anyone would like to talk about before we dive in to the slides to look over the CNCF CI next iteration plan? Great. <laughs> so the next iteration of CNCF CI. CNCF CI is currently a status dashboard that shows multiple projects and multiple cloud providers um, provisioning on Kubernetes and then running on the cloud providers. CNCF CI v2 will have a different focus and view. So I will time box this probably five minutes or less. I'll go over the goals for the next iteration of the CNCF CI dashboard, high level features, review the mocks and the roadmap. Then I'll pass it over to my colleague Taylor Carpenter to open the discussion for test results on test grid and Q&A. And we'll make sure that we've got plenty of time um, remaining for the Alibaba Cloud demo and the Rook discussion. All right, high level goals for the CNCF CI dashboard. These are um, in line with the CNCF goals. We want to help demonstrate the use of cloud native technologies and promote new CNCF projects, attract more interest into CNCF, and provide a third party neutral spot to validate these projects. We'd like to support and contribute to a sustainable and scalable project ecosystem and allow um, to get feedback from cloud native end users and projects. We'd also like to see the CNCF CI dashboard as a complement to the landscape, which is at l.cncf.io and the trail map to kind of say, let's see these CNCF projects in action, and they'll all be listed on the dashboard. Thank you, Taylor, for linking the landscape there. So the first key feature of the new iteration of the dashboard will be to highlight and validate the CNCF's graduated and incubating projects. Currently, there are three levels of maturity for CNCF projects, graduated, incubating, and sandbox. And we'd like to start by um, really highlighting those graduated and incubating ones. And we'll start by validating the stable and head releases or the stable and head commit from GitHub. The sandbox projects um, may be added at a later time, but we'll start with those um, top maturity projects. We'll list them in alphabetical order of graduated and then followed by alphabetical order of incubated. And we also have a section for Linux Foundation projects like ONAP. We plan to reuse build containers that are provided by a project CI system, which is different than what the current dashboard does now. We build those projects, um, we rebuild those projects from scratch. So we will rebuild using um, our artifacts that are provided by the projects and the project CI system. And we'll reuse home charts that are also provided by project maintainers and reuse end-to-end -end tests that are provided by project maintainers. Secondly, with that, we want to increase collaboration with the project maintainers. So we will be reworking the dashboard um, and the different components 
so that the maintainers can update the project details through a GitHub PR, release details through a GitHub PR. We'd like our system to integrate with your external CI system. We're currently using GitLab as the, the base CI system, and we want it to be a flexible system that can use, if you use GitLab, we'll use that. If you use um, Travis CI, we'll integrate with that, Jenkins, et cetera. Um, so that we can retrieve the project's build status and container artifacts from your own CI system. We would like to encourage the maintainers to provide home charts and smoke tests to run the app deploy phase of the dashboard. We would also um, like to work with the maintainers to provide end-to-end -end tests for the new test phase that we'll see on the new mocks. Hopefully, with this increase in collaboration, will come an acceleration on seeing new projects on the dashboard. We'd like to support more contributors to the projects and share the responsibility for adding and maintaining those projects um, to reduce the level of maintenance by just one party. And for Kubernetes, we'd like to demonstrate provisioning on various Kubernetes releases onto bare metal packets. Currently, we're showing the stable in the head releases, and we would like to add support for the release candidate. The new UI also supports more release versions. If we would like to go back one or two versions of Kubernetes, for example, our new UI will allow for that support as well. And finally, another key feature is we'd like to start using KubeADM for bootstrapping Kubernetes onto packets. I'll go through a few of these mocks. Oops, slide 15 hopefully will be updated before we get there. Please pardon if they're a little bit blurry. These are images that I've stretched to kind of work in this platform of Google Slides. So here is the mock-up for the next iteration for the CI dashboard overview screen. At the top, we've got the test environment showing Kubernetes stable release running on bare metal packet, and that initial stage is a success. After that initial stage is successful, then the graduated CNCF projects um, will uh, show the releases. This is the latest stable and the latest head commit from GitHub, the build status, the deploy status, and then this would be the end-to-end -end test status. We have this mock showing Kubernetes at the top for the test environment, followed by the graduated projects in alphabetical order, Envoy and Prometheus currently, followed by incubating in alphabetical order, followed by Linux Foundation projects, ONAP currently. The badges indicate a success or a fail, and if the build stage failed, then the deploy and test stage would show a gray and a badge. They would not be clickable. We would not run any action if that initial stage failed. Likewise, if the build and deploy, the build ran and the deploy failed, then we would not show the end-to-end -end test. And we may see in the beginning, if we don't yet have the coding for the end-to-end -end test, then we may see that this column is all NA, and hopefully that would prompt um, a discussion and a collaboration to work on adding those end-to-end -end tests with the project maintainers. The next slides show the Kubernetes release selector. So here's stable v113.1 has a down arrow. I click on that down arrow and it opens up a selector dropdown. I have the options to choose the latest head commit or the release candidate, which would be a new feature. If I highlight over release candidate, then it switches to release candidate. And are there any questions about um, the mocks or the high level key features and goals yet at this point? Okay, I'll continue. The roadmap, how are we going to get there? January, here we are. We are planning and announcing those changes. 
February next month, we plan to reveal the new UI of the project focused home, home screen. We also would like to implement the smoke tests after the app deploy and plan for integrations and QADM. For March, we'll be preparing for the Open Networking Summit in San Jose. So we'd like to update ONAP and we'd like to implement the external integrations to the uh, project's CI system. We'd also like to provide that documentation on how the project maintainers can get started on adding their project to the dashboard. And in April, we hope to implement the new feature of the Kubernetes release candidate. So here is our work in progress roadmap. February, removing, uh, we'll be removing the cloud deployments from CNCSCI on Monday, February 25th. And our next working group meeting will be on Tuesday, February 26th. We also plan to split the app deploy and end-to-end -end testing so that it, um, we currently have them in the one stage on the CNCF CI that's on production now, and we'll just split that so that we have those two different columns. And then we'll do some planning for QBADM, smoke tests, and prioritizing the projects to see which ones, based on maturity and eligibility, can be added next. March. Preparation for that working group at the end of March and Open Networking Summit in the beginning of April. Um, updating ONAP to latest release, start adding end-to-end -end and smoke tests, and start updating that functionality to um, add the project details, release details, build details, integrations with the external systems. Um, updating each component so that we can collaborate with those project maintainers and creating that README as well. And then later on in the year, uh, we hope to add that release candidate for Kubernetes. We have some presentations for KubeCon EU, an intro to the CNCF CI project, as well as a deep dive on how to add new projects. And then September will be Open Networking Summit where we may um, update ONAP again. Maybe we'll have another Linux Foundation project on the dashboard. Time will tell. And then in November, we've got KubeCon in San Diego, where we hope to do another intro and deep dive for CNCFCI and the current state. At this time, I'm happy to continue sharing my screen, mute myself, and hand it over to Taylor to start the discussion on adding the cloud provider test results to test grid and moving away from showing the cloud provider deployments on CNCFCI. Thanks, Lucina. So um, as part of complementing other projects and efforts that are going on, like the conformance working group, SIG testing, um, we've been actively uh, talking with folks about test grid, um, how we could integrate directly, maybe pull results, help with um, different views. Uh, there's a the dashboard right now that's for test grid is goes into lots of details that help the developers on that side, especially Kubernetes bug and everything. And and then how results are sent. There's a lot of different items on that and and that and then you can get into stuff like how deployments are happening. There's a lot of different efforts on that, including the different cloud providers, um, creating the integrations that can go directly into uh, the the new plugins that have been split out. <laughs> so we're trying to make sure that what we're doing is complementing or maybe exploring some areas that aren't there yet. And that's what this is about. So we're hoping to get feedback going forward on where, where we can help best from like a cloud provider standpoint and people that are wanting to test or look at things. Right now it's gonna be, as Lucina was just going over, we're moving off on the, the view, so that's not the focus. 
and then we'll be helping any cloud providers that are currently on to move over, submit, make sure that they're able to run the conformance test and push the results up into Test Grid, <clears throat> which right now is um, Google um, um, buckets at the moment, but it's their specific formats and stuff for sharing the data that's useful. Mm -hmm. But helping with that and seeing how that's going. Um, that's the overview. I don't know if anyone on the call has comments or questions about that, this particular part for the transition. Uh, I have a very quick question. So what will be the uh, CNCF cloud provider dashboard looks like after we migrate all the data to test grid? So there will be no any more cloud provider or there will be still something like data, but the data is coming from a test grid. What will be it looks like? So the, the next iteration that's going to be released for the CNCFCI dashboard, so I, th I think that's what you're referring to right now. Other people could run different dashboards. The source is available to run all of that. But the actual dashboard that's running on CNCFCI right now will not have cloud providers as a focus. At some future date, there may be a, another screen or a view that could show that. Um, don't know what that's going to be. But right now, there won't be cloud providers there. So there's, there are, on test grid, there is a view to go in and look at those. It's, it's tied in with a lot of other information. Um, the results themselves would be submit, submitted directly to test grid. But at this time, there won't be a, something similar to what's on the current dashboard. I think, thank you. Any other questions? Taylor, is there a... Hey, Taylor. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, Ed. But, uh, this is Dan Kahn from CNCF. Maybe we could just provide one, one piece of context that's, that's missing from this, which is the original driver for making this change to 2.0 is that we want the responsibility for ensuring that the clouds are um, working correctly on the clouds that we, we don't feel like we're the the right body to be um, ensuring to to fix things and such and, and in many cases it's required coordination that's that's challenging for us to pull off and so if, if each project is or each cloud or each provider is responsible for it then they could provide the data to us and we could display it but the question then is well how what are we going to do the, with the data that's different from test grid and so I, I guess I would, would leave open the idea of us displaying something in the future. Um, it, it, we're not ruling it out, but, but for now, we don't see that as, as the core value that we could provide. This is Ed. Um, one of the things that was nice about the CNCFCI system as it stood right now is that you could get a pretty good idea whether a problem with a project was specific to that cloud, maybe that cloud having a bad day or something specific to the cloud, or whether it was specific to the project. Um, does Test Grid have, I guess, views? I, it certainly would have all the data, but does it currently have views that would allow you to do this sort of cross-cloud comparison within the Test Grid infrastructure? They don't, as far as I know, there's nothing in test grid that'll give you a quick overview of all the projects. The data's there. So you could go through and look at the health of, um, say, three or four different cloud providers, whatever you're wanting to look at, and look at how that is. But there's no quick overview screen. And I, th I think tying in with what Dan was saying, there's been requests um, from a lot of folks on the test that work with test grid and from different projects that would like a view that does that, that may be a completely different type of dashboard. It may not be at CNCFCI, it could be wherever, but there's been a desire to do that and that, that could happen. There's some interest we'll be talking with them. And then as far as something directly on the dashboard and to continue with what Dan was saying, if we can have cloud providers that can help 
may, that maintain, I won't say help, but they actually maintain running the test, submitting the results. And we know we already have a home for those that other people are doing it. That's test grid. We could potentially have a view of the test data and specific parts that maybe the community as a whole says, we're real interested in this piece. Maybe that's a view that we do and it would pull from there, but then allow like Dan is saying to make sure cloud providers can fix issues that they identify as their own because they have control over that. Um, so if, if you have thoughts on like what information or the views that would be useful and we can, we'd love to hear those. So we think about that as we're going forward. Thank you so much. Any other questions? Very good. The next item on the agenda, Harry, if you're available, I'm happy to keep my screen share or I can release it if you would like to share your screen to talk about the CI dashboard over at Alibaba Cloud. Yeah, thank you. And I've stopped my screen, perfect. Okay, so I think you guys should be able to see my screen. Yes. Okay. So um, today I would like to share a very um, simple demo about how we uh, we running a, uh, very, uh, a something very similar to CNSF dashboard in Alibaba group. Actually, um, the background is we have a lot of teams in Alibaba Group, including Alibaba Cloud, including the Unfinancial, we have a lot of affiliate companies in Alibaba Group. They have their own Kubernetes cluster, actually. And we notice that some of our teams, they actually, you know, maybe uh, hack a little bit about on the Kubernetes code, and they begin to maintain their own version, and they begin to divert from the upstream, which we are trying to avoid this situation. So. So last year, we created a cross-team CI dashboard in Alibaba Group, and we asked, we required every team in Alibaba to upload their end-to-end -end test result, I mean, upstream end-to-end -end test result to the system. So we can know that which team is going to divert from the upstream, and we will cooperate with them to make sure that they will keep up with the, um, the upstream, and we will see anything to contribute to contribute back to the upstream or anything we need to re-implement or refactor into plugin, something like that. That is why we have a cross-team CI dashboard in Alibaba, and it, it currently works very well. And the UI of this da dashboard is very simple. Uh, it's basically very similar like the um, CNCF cross-cloud CI dashboard, except that we only, except that we don't have Cloud providers there. We have a lot of team there. We, we have team which name is Alibaba. We have team which name is Ali Yun, which uh, that means Alibaba Cloud. And we also have uh, the, uh, the 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 date table for uh, all the other teams inside Alibaba. I have a very uh, small, very quick demo about how the how this um, cross cloud CI works. And as you can see here, it is actually a very uh, simple um, front end website, and every Table every um, every data in this cross team CI is actually a CRD in our Kubernetes cluster. So, for example, we can define a category which name is Kubernetes, and we can define uh, the test result project which name like conformance test or end to end test. So after that, we just create these uh, CRDs in Kubernetes cluster, and then we will have uh, the category and the project. Uh, on the website of the uh, of the CI of the CI dashboard, it's very easy. So, so as you can see, uh, if you create a CRD which name conformance test, a CRD which name end to end test, you will have a two dashboard here. And after that, uh, we also add our own provider, which 
is actually a different teams. For example, we have team which name is Alibaba, which have team which name is Ali Ali Yun. Uh, that is that is Alibaba Cloud actually. So every team in, in inside the Alibaba group will uh, will add themselves as a provider on this cross cloud CI. And after you create this create these CRDs, and you can see that we have more uh, providers in our cross cloud CI. And uh, as long as we have all the teams on board with the, with our CR dashboard, and then those teams will be required to upload their test result. And, and, and again, the test result is also a CRD, which is following these specifications, like what is your project, what is your um, cluster version, and what is the test result from your team. And we also require them to link uh, a URL of their internal uh, CI system. Maybe it's Jenkins or Travis, we don't care about it, but it should be a URL of the build. And uh, you can see we actually uh, added it as a field which named it details, detailed reference. And after we create this um, test result CRDs in our Kubernetes cluster, and then we will see the, um, the real test result uploaded from different teams. And the red means it actually is it, it, not passed. There's something error here because some, some, some test, test is failed. And, and also we have the author link which is actually the detailed part of the, uh, the internal CI system in Alibaba Cloud of that team. So we can see what happened to the Kubernetes cluster of that team. Okay, we can see which test is failed and what happened and we can try to help them. And um, so, yeah, so this is basically um, how our um, cross team CI dashboard works in Alibaba Cloud. And you can see it actually very similar to, uh, to the CNCF CI dashboard, and that's why um, we are trying to see if there are collaboration with uh, CNCF CI work group. And we have over uh, one of the over primary goal is we want to add Alibaba Cloud as a provider in the cross cloud CI. Uh, but as, as we have already discussed offline and today, and actually we can see the CNCF uh, cross cloud CI trying to use test grid uh, as a new way to make and the cloud provider. So here are some very quick questions maybe we can discuss later. Is, is, so what will be the CNCF CI dashboard looks like? I have asked this question actually in the meeting. And the second question is how CNCF CI dashboard collect data from test grid or we just, you know, maybe we don't care about that. We just use test grid to as, a, uh, as all these test result dashboard instead. And the second goal uh, overall, um, collaboration what we want to try to looking at is that we want to install CNCF cross cloud CI inside Alibaba to serve as the next version of our cross team CI dashboard because you know we don't want to maintain something which is basically exactly the same with uh, what the CNCF is doing and we can see that uh, we already have a open source project in CNCF and we are trying to see if we can reuse them and we can contribute to, the, to this project so we don't need to have maintain a very stupid and simple project inside of our team, which you know we are not very good at maintaining this kind of CI system. And that's why we also have a very quick, quick question is that what will be the timeline of test grid frameworks be fully open source? Because we actually cooperated with Kubernetes test infra team for a few times and we, we find that the, the test grid framework is not fully open source yet. So we cannot install the whole framework inside Alibaba but we, we would like to see what will be the timeline, what we can do to push it, and we are very happy to contribute to this kind of um, effort. Okay, thank you. That's what we are, uh, I'm trying to demo today, and I will um, release it, the screen, okay? So if you guys have any questions, and uh, please let me know. Thank you, Harry. Uh, Taylor, do you have some answers to those questions on Harry's? So let me unmute here. Okay. Um, well, so the uh, we kind of went over, I guess, how it looks. So we have some of those mocks as far as um, how the view of the dashboard is. Um, the current view that we have, that's, again, available if someone wanted to fork and use that 
as as is the dashboard itself is pretty flexible like, as far as adding new clouds but the new view is what we were just showing mocks um i'm not sure exactly what that will look like as far as if you came in it would be nice if uh, you may have to go back and get a, the older current version if you wanted to be able to have what we have i think either way the new view or the other it is about showing status at different stages that could be projects or it could be groups. So it's still probably pretty applicable to what you're doing. As far as Alibaba as a cloud provider, I'm happy to help um, with the integration into test grid and collecting data. Um, and the there won't be any dashboard at this time other than test grid. So it wouldn't be it wouldn't be like what we're seeing now. Um, in the future, don't know what that would be. Um, and then inside of, as far as your second item for adding, trying to use um, either different components. So the actual cross-cloud CI project, when you look at it at GitHub, it's a lot of different pieces. There's different repos. Um, the And those different components could be used separately from, say, the dashboard. And some of those could be useful for submitting, running um, different parts of, of maybe the Kubernetes test or whatever and submitting that. Mm -hmm. um, the test grid, test grid framework, are you asking about how we would integrate with, how we would show stuff from that or on your, on your final question here as far as like timeline of test grid framework to be fully open source? Are you referring to in helping to submit results for Alibaba or viewing results like on a new dashboard? Yeah, so there are actually two questions. Uh, the first question is I'm trying to figure out how we will collect data from test grid in the next version of CNCF CI dashboard. And we are also looking at if anything we can help. And the second question is, as I said, uh, we want to um, install the, the, the CNCF Cloud CDI inside Alibaba. So that means um, every, every, every part in this pipeline should be fully open source and we can install that in, inside Alibaba. But I know Cloud, Cloud, Cloud CDI is already fully open sourced, but as far as I know, that the test grid itself is not open source yet, or it's not fully open source yet, because we find something, something that is missing from the current GitHub repo of, of test grid. So, so the second question is, uh, when maybe what, what will be a timeline or the plan of, of test grid fully open sourced in the future? I think it will be happen this year, as Dan also discussed this part with me, and we will we like we would like to see if there are more detailed timeline or anything we can help, because we will be happy to see if we can install all the pipeline inside Alibaba. Okay. Um, yeah. I think so. Maybe just something on that. go ahead, Dan. Oh, just if if test grid is never going to be open source, if that sort of came out, um, I would uh, be open to CNCF funding uh, an open source replacement for it. But mm -hmm. but having spoken to Google about it, it, it just it doesn't seem like there's anything proprietary or sensitive or anything like that. It's just the tedious issue of it being tied to internal systems and them not having the resources to, to cut those ties and make it uh, portable. But, uh, and then as we mentioned earlier, um, I, I am also open, uh, particularly we had help from, from some of you on designing and funding a, a third party uh, interface to test grid that would be pulling the data from it. So I, I think there's a lot of areas for collaboration here. My hope though is that test grid will open source and then you'll feel more comfortable using that as the repository for all the data. Okay, I see. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm happy to um, speak to a few of these questions. I wanted to see though if, Jared, if, if you've run out of time or if, if you're able to have any um, discussion, I know that you were gonna have to leave. Uh, yeah, I, I could just bring up uh, what I wanted to and then maybe chat for a couple minutes. Um, 
but I don't want to derail the current discussion that's going on for test grid right now. That seems to be more broadly applicable to the attendees of this meeting. So that's, you know, we could take this particular topic uh, that I wanted offline completely. That's okay too. Okay. Well, I guess, uh, Jared, on, on yours, um, the, as far as Rook, we're, we're looking at with this new iteration of the CNCFCI is making it a lot easier for projects to help adding themselves and, and doing the integration with external systems. So that's part of what we're planning. And, and as far as the roadmap, we're going to be having public documentation for how the different pieces can be added and updated on the screen, um, where that's going to come from. There will be pieces like it, if we need to do a direct integration with a new CI system. So we talk with Jenkins right now, we're going to be adding support to talk with, you know, different ones based on the project. So if, if it's all right to take that offline, we can talk specifically about Rook because we are interested in doing that. Yeah, that's fine. And then the one comment I would make right here in this forum is that what I saw from uh, what Lucina was talking about with the 2.0 effort, it, it looks like that's going in the direction that a lot of the hosted projects by the CNCF, the, you know, the incubating projects and the graduated projects would probably like to see it go. Uh, it looks like it'll be, you know, there's an effort around being able to add those projects and integrate more easily into that environment. So we have all of the integration tests running for all of the CNCF projects. Um, and so that, that's, I think what I saw today is, is actually what I am very interested in seeing uh, and helping the, the Rook project is, you know, just like any of the other CNCF projects uh, integrate. And then the final thing is that it wasn't entirely clear, uh, you know, if it's possible for the CNCF to be hosting the CI environment completely, because, you know, we're running our own Jenkins server right now, and it's, it's, we don't have the resources really, or the expertise to be keeping that up to date and babysitting it and, and hosting it very effectively. So if the CNCF has the ability to, you know, host the environment, we'd be okay with migrating our current Jenkins setup over to what works better for the cross cloud environment or the uh, effort there. And you're know, doing some of that porting migration work in order to have the CNCF and, you know, the cross cloud CI experts there kind of being able to host the integration test on a more day to day basis. And then we can take the rest of that discussion offline. That's the only comments I wanted to make today. We've heard, um, I guess, from several different projects, similar things as far as hosting. That's a pretty big effort, I guess, is the short of it. And I think there is an interest from different folks that are helping provide um, CI environments, including on the Linux Foundation side, um, figuring out a way to do that where it doesn't require a team of, of 50 just to keep that running as a desired. Ideally, it's more of a self-serve. So that's not something I would say we're gonna be looking at right now for the way this is running. Um, we'd wanna say, you have a Jenkins system, let's integrate with that. Mm. And if maybe in the future we could, what I would, I would say I would like to look at would be how do we have something that's more of like a template or, you, or a skeleton framework for the CI system and it's self-serve. So you can come in and if you put stuff in there, then, then, it, then it runs. Um, ideally, it's similar to any project where you're gonna drop your Circle CI or Travis and you go configure the pieces that you care about. And maybe that's the clusters. You didn't have to worry about the cluster. You say enable the cluster. Um, Definitely some ideas um, that we can talk about in there, what that would be. Um, Dan, do you have any comments or thoughts on, on this particular item? Uh, no, I mean, I, I would mention that um, the packet uh, hardware is available to projects via the Community Infrastructure Lab, but um, we're, we're, CNCF would definitely be hesitant on taking over management of a Jenkins infrastructure. If, if anything, I'd say we're, we're trying to get away from that and encouraging folks to go with commercial hosting. Got it. Yeah, thanks, Dan, and thanks, Taylor. I appreciate the, the discussion today. Great. Thanks, uh, Jared. And if we have, I'm, I'm happy to go back and answer a few of the other questions, uh, Harry, that you had.
if you'd like to continue. Or if, if everyone's good, then we can go ahead and <clears throat> continue on. I think we're at the end of the agenda. Does anyone have any other comments or questions? Okay. Happy to continue with any of this offline um, on the CNCFCI Slack channel, the mailing list, um, and on the specifically on the Alibaba stuff. If if you can follow up, Harry, with uh, any questions that we didn't answer, and we can continue from there. Uh, hey guys, this is Dustin Oberlo from uh, from Oracle. Um, I guess as far as next steps are concerned, um, my team will probably be following up on email uh, just to get everything sorted out. Uh, uh, we had initially uh, been working on the CNCI uh, code within uh, or the Oracle part of the CNCF CI stuff. Uh, and we're going to be transitioning that over to a different team. So we need to sort that out internally and then we'll follow up. Uh, I think the email thread has already been started with, uh, with Lucina. So we'll just use that same one. <laughs> Great. Sounds good, Dustin. Okay. So the next um, meeting is February 26th. If anyone has um, ideas for that, the, we'll, you can post it in the agenda early. Uh, slides um, will be made available. And I think that's it. Thanks everyone for attending. Appreciate feedback and presentations. Thank you very much. Thanks, Have everybody. a good one. Enjoy the rest of your week.